It's Marilyn Wilson here um, for Coffee Chat on a on a happy Monday. I hope you guys all had a great weekend. Uh, good morning, Tim, and uh, good morning, Dennis. You're funny asking about the special speaker on Wednesday. Um, so today we're going to talk about leveraging the best of class technology to build your brand. We've got two uh, design and web web design and just marketing experts with us today: John Crab and Brian Shore from Agent Image. And they're going to tell us, they're going to actually show us some beautiful websites, number one, but also just give us some really good words of advice about where do we go from here? Um, you know, without being digital these days, we all know that we're really heading into disadvantage. So they've got some great ideas about ways that you can go digital and, and some things coming soon that are even more exciting. So welcome, everybody. Um, wanted to just let you know that um, we love it when you ask us questions. So. If you drop to the right hand side, um, if you see the word questions right next to it, there's a little gray triangle, click on that and that'll open up and feel free to ask us any questions that you would like to or send something in the chat. Uh, we'd love to ask questions and these guys will be happy to answer it. They're, they're a wealth of knowledge about what works, works well for web marketing for realtors. So feel free to jump in. So with that, I wanna introduce them officially. We have Brian Shore, he's the VP of Business Development for Agent Image. John Crabb, he's the co-founder and managing partner of Agent Image. They're both located in Los Angeles. We we have some regulars with us, Brian from uh, and John from, I know from Orange County. I think there's probably some from LA as well. And this is, I think some of you now know I'm up in San Luis Obispo. So you got all Californians with you today. Sorry about that, guys. I think we're all crazy out here. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> let's just jump in. Um, they've got yeah. some great stuff to show you. So first, we're going to go through a variety of different. Um, websites that these guys have built for top producing agents and um and wanted to show you so jump in yeah. guys what, what what tell us what did you learn about from the oppenheim group this one's uh interesting this one actually real trends um every year you guys are probably familiar with real trends they do uh they have their obviously their broker rankings broker 500 and uh they also have their wall street journal tom ferry real estate uh you know the 1000 list they're known for but what's interesting, they also do website rankings, which they started doing it's about five years ago. And uh, this particular site actually took best website overall in the industry for 2019, the Oppenheim Group, which obviously uh, Jason and Brett have, uh, you know, have the Selling Sunset show on Netflix. So this was a site we built for them for their company uh, at the time. But yeah, it's one, I believe, best overall, um, best design, other sites. So yeah, it's uh, yeah. That's, that's this particular one. Did I do that justice, Brian? Or? Yeah, and I mean, it, it, it's funny, you know, as as we go through and we build these websites, you know, especially ones that are from agents that, that have a pretty solid following like the Oppenheim group, um, it, you get a lot of uh, folks that will call in or email us and say, hey, you know, I love that website. That's something that, you know... It, we want to kind of make our branding. We want to make our marketing and, you know, kind of design something that's on, on the same level as what, what the Oppenheim group does. So uh, it, it allows us, you know, from a creativity standpoint to kind of set a bar, if you will, and uh, always try to, you know, continue to raise it after. Yeah. And, you know, I think really it's capturing the brand of the agent, right. And, and the team, you know, that's, that's the one thing that, yeah. Is, is a challenge. I think from we always have thought of ourselves sort of a branding agency first and foremost. Uh, even before that was sort of even the, the buzzword out there, and and you're always trying to capture you know the clients, the agent's personality, their you know sort of their experience or knowledge, and convey it in a in an engaging way that really draws a visitor in and sort of keeps them interested from the moment they get there. And and that's really the name of the game. I think with any website is you really want to create a connection immediately to you know to whoever your audience is as, as much as possible. But why do you think yeah. this one was the winner? What 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 differentiated this website from some others? Would you say? You no, know, I think for this, and I'll, I'll let Brian chime in this in a second too. I think if you if you go through it, every single part, and you know, it's credit I think to Jason too. It's and, and Brett, it's a collaborative effort. Whenever you're building a website, you know, I, I always tell people the more you know love and care you put into it, um, the more you'll get out of it, and and that goes with I think anything, right? But when it comes to this type of thing, his attention to detail, our attention to detail, building this out was really it. If you ever a chance and you kind of visit the site, it's ogroup.com, but you scroll down the homepage alone, tells 
it tells a story and I always try and try and, and, and tell you know people that as much as you can try and tell a story when someone gets to your website try and have everything sort of go in an order that makes sense that's uh, that you know that's engaging that really sort of uh, you know conveys who you are and connects again to to the consumer to the the person at the end of the screen because you know and I think this site does that in spades it has a lot of cool interactive technology within it a lot of really clean uh, you know mouse overs for the team you can actually see it goes from black and white to color as you mouse over each team member when you get to it it has just a lot of neat uh, sort of attention to detail really that's, that was put into that a lot of love that went into that site and that's what I yeah um, I, I I would have, I would have, attention to detail, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, I think that the one thing that I would add to that is if you go, in this particular case, I mean, keep in mind, this is a full custom site. So right. uh, if you go into the depth of this website, um, we, we didn't mail it in on any page. Uh, yeah. Like, it, it was one of those things where, you know, if you, if you have a page and you say, well, if this, is this exactly what I wanted on this page or, you know, did, did we nail it or is there something that we could do better? This is that website that we just kept on kind of pushing and pushing all the way. Even how the listings are presented, everything on a site, and I, I kind of tell people this too a lot of the time is, you know, a website doesn't have to be a, a huge in scope or, you know, but whatever pages you do, whatever your focal point is, anything that you put into the site, make sure each page looks clean, it, it's engaging, it has imagery on it, it has, as much as you can put video on a website nowadays, um, you know, we're, we're all in where, where we're at right now, how business is being done is, is so much online now compared to, you know, out shaking hands and meeting people face to face. So, you know, what someone's interaction with you, what their experience with you may very well be digital the first time, be it Zoom meetings or calls, but even before that, people are Googling you. You know, I also tell people like clients, you know, Google yourself right now, see what's out there. Because the first thing people are looking at is your website, is social media reviews, things like that. And they're right. engaging with you on a digital level far greater than ever before. And even once we're out of all this, it's gonna be that way. It, it's sort of the new norm. So it was already headed that direction. You know, the, the you know, where the world is today is to sort of fast track that. But, you know, the more video you can put on a website so people can connect with you and sort of get a feel for you and, and find some commonality, you know, I also help people be relatable. Um, you know, the more you can be, you know, relatable and connect to to people out there through video, through the personality of your website or your social media. Um, those are it's huge right now, and it's so important. Gotcha. Well, let's look at the next one. Yeah. This looks and like I, I would just say, you know, as you go through Tracy Tudor, uh, obviously uh, uh, one of the uh, stars of Million Dollar Listing Los Angeles. Uh, Shameful plug there. Uh, that's premiering tomorrow, I believe. Um, but uh, you know, as you can see, each one has its own branding and personality, right? right. Um, you know, whether whether you're a celebrity agent or if you're not, branding is, is a thing. It, it is 100% important. And um, I think during this this uh, time, this this you know, pandemic that we've just experienced, uh, the, the attention that you, you need to have that digital presence and the fact that if your branding isn't unique and really tailored to who you are and, you know, and be a little bit more of an individual versus, you know, looking like everybody else out there, uh, you know, it, you're missing the boat if yeah, you don't see really that already. Yeah, you really do need to stand out. You know, as I said, whatever website vendor, whatever digital marketing companies you, you bring on and, and hire and sort of work with, and it, it really is important they capture your brand, that it stands out and that it's different. You know, that, that's that's probably in this industry, the one thing, you know, I'm doing this 20 years since since 99, you know, it's it, it, I've seen there's so many templates out there, so many things that, you know, when it comes to your, your brand and your business, you, you've got to differentiate it. No matter what, you've got to put the time in to really – uh, set it apart. I, I've told agents forever and, and clients, you know, you're better off having no website at all than having a website that's poorly designed or presents you in a poor light because you can't unsee that first impression. You can't undo that. You know, it's it's one of those things where they're looking at how you're going to represent their property, you know, how you're going to, you know, what your level of experience is and anything that has your name on it. I don't care if it's, you know, a newsletter, um, 
you know, uh, uh, mailers, whatever you're doing, your website, social media, everything has to tie together. You have to have that cohesiveness of brand because mm -hmm. to not have that, it, it, one, it's wasting marketing dollars. Two, it just, it, it doesn't paint you in, in a great light. And it, it's, and it's not that hard to do those things. You know, it's just I, I, right now taking an inventory. I, I tell a lot of agents, take an inventory of everything you have. You'd be surprised what it is that might generate business for you. Literally, it could be a newsletter, it could be a mailer that's going out, it could be your website, but make sure each of them has a consistent feel across all those marketing mediums and make sure they, you know, if you got it in the mail, if you, you know, stumbled upon your website, whatever it is, however they arrive at you, if you looked at that, would you do business with you? Would you trust you as, as far as, uh, you know, with literally the most important, you know, transaction arguably in their lives or most, uh, you know, emotional for sure from purchasing a home, selling a home, whatnot. These are things that you really need to consider, you know, what is, what's the brand I'm putting out there and, and is it strong and does it say who I am? So. So, oh, I, I, you know, let me ask a fundamental question about that because I've heard this more than once from agents and, and TZ, I see your questions. I'm going to get to them in a second. Um, but, um, I've heard, and I, I really get sad when I hear this, and I hope none of you think of yourself this way, but I hear people say, well, I'm just a real estate agent, right? Nobody's just a real estate agent. You do, you do some <laughs> no. work. You help people buy their buy and sell their most important asset. Yep. Um, so I, number one, don't ever think of yourself as just a real estate agent, but it, it is difficult sometimes to think about, well, what makes me unique, right? What, like, okay, so Tracy's amazing, and I'm sure you've got 700 other clients that are amazing, yep. and they all do good work, but what makes, and not so much what is make what makes Tracy Tracy, because I mean, I'm sure she's awesome, but yep. what's the thought process people should go through to say, what is it that makes me unique? I mean, sometimes it's just geography, but there's more than that, right? We're all individual humans, so how do you, how do you come to a design agency and say, I think my unique secret sauce is blank? How do you, how do you get there? You know, it, it varies, I think, because you, we have, we see the full gamut, right? We see agents like these who are, you know, maybe celebrity agents in different markets, but the bulk of the agents we work with are brand new agents starting out or agents who've been in the business a couple of years, you know, up to five, 10 years, whatnot, and, and beyond. But really it's amazing how many don't one don't have a brand identity and and haven't thought of even creating that right like that's that's something we you know we see day in and day out and we help sort of sculpt but at the same time you kind of just i think you just talk to the the agent should never be or the broker whoever it is should never be scared to sort of bear who they are on that call get a feel for it's our job or any design and branding firm's job to get a feel for who you are be that looking through your existing marketing you might have um understanding who your clientele is you know if there's a certain you know i have a client down in san diego who works with a lot of military families for instance and mm -hmm. how does she capture that market and how do you emulate that into a site and sort of tell that story um because really at the end of the day the beauty of a website and a brand is you kind of control the narrative on it as, as much more so than you will third-party sites or things out there that that you don't so you really can create that and I think when it comes to your brand, it's just, so it is just getting a feel for the person and sort of, you know, what are your favorite colors? What are different things? Because I, I tell people on this in social media too, uh, to sort of bounce in other areas. If you, if you were to, you know, there's a big conversation between, um, what do you call it? Manufactured brands versus authentic brands, right? So mm -hmm. when you're operating your social media accounts, don't necessarily think of what you think the consumer wants to see or what the customer wants to see, et cetera. You have you want to mix in your business, but you also want to be again relatable. So mix in family photos or you know hobbies or you know if it's cars or you know spending time with your with your dogs, your puppies, whatever it is, something that makes you and humanizes you in a digital medium, uh, if you will, but really gets that personal connection going because you never know what's going to connect somebody. So brand is really just personality and getting a feel for that. And I, I don't know if there's a a solid you know sort of a, a structured answer you can even give to that it's just getting a feel for the person you know do yeah. they as simple as do they have a logo do they have something that's, that identifies them as a brand even um what does that look like is it initials is it uh you know some you know like at successful brands that have done it well from louis vuitton to chanel to coke to sony um is it easily identifiable when you see it um you know things of that sort so it's kind of a mixed answer, but there's it's just really capturing the personality of the agent and sort of the style and, and the feel of what they're going for and, and getting that
conveyed onto uh, you know whatever medium that is. So like this yeah. website for Aaron Kerman is very different than what I normally think of as real estate websites. He looks like a model and it's like a designer label, doesn't it? <laughs> to me, he looks yeah. like Aaron yep. Kerman line of uh, men's clothing. It's beautiful. Um, but he doesn't show properties and it really doesn't look that much like real estate. How did you get to this kind of an approach? Because it's very, very different than what you normally see. Yeah, you know, and he, it, his is interesting, right? Because he has this team of about, I think it's probably 70 plus agents now. So he has Aaron Kerman Group.com and then his personal site. Aaron's a bit different, right? Because if you take him or you take a lot of these um, sometimes celebrity agents who have TV shows like he has Listing Impossible and all these different things, you're trying to create a balance for these types of sites that are almost between like a, a fan site and a real estate agent, you know, and, and an actual agent site. Um, and a, uh, you know, if, if, for instance, if you scroll down on the site, it goes right into the properties, things like that. But a lot of people going to Aaron's site are going to know for more, more information about him, things of that sort. You'll see a lot of other sites that, you know, on the slides you had too, they're focused more on the property. We put some agents like this is his site. Some agents like Tracy's, we kind of put their photo on there to show. But most of these sites, the bulk of them do focus on sort of the properties in the area first. Aaron's, um, the Altman's, I would say there's some others that, you know, their personality is what a lot of people are going to the site for. They either know the reputation or have seen them on TV or, you know, whatever that medium is, and they want to connect with them that way. And if that leads to a sale of a home, if it leads to a purchase of a home, you know, then it, it, it does. But you're, you, those are the challenge. Those types of sites, you're balancing the brand of the agent, the personality with the actual, you know, what they do. And etc et so his was kind of cool because the design was something different you don't see a lot of black and white websites um mm -hmm. a lot of his site runs in black and white which is pretty cool with kind of color mouse overs and things like that um they had a very distinct idea they even had a sort of an in-house team when we came on board and started working with Aaron that they had an idea the direction they wanted to go and it was pretty cool you know it's something different you know it's it's everybody's different and and i think that really is take this site it's memorable right because again there's certain elements to it that you're gonna you know remember above a lot of other websites that you might you know pass through that are you know the generic sort of template with the you know <laughs> photo here logo here etc cetera, etc cetera. it's um it really is just capturing each person's personality and, and how to do that and it's yeah that's i think it's a challenge for any branding agency or marketing agency period well, and it sort of suggests luxury when you look at it. It suggests so many things. And um, but again, not every agent is focused on luxury, right? So that's I think that's the key. And like you say, what's what branding agencies have to to yeah. work with your customers on is finding a way to to capture the person's unique personality and their unique skills as a realtor, right? It's not just I'm a great person. It's like I'm a great realtor. You know, you're not hiring me to be a great person. So. It's yeah, and, and a lot of times, you know, most of the sites I'd say we do are more area and property focused, you know, that sort of, you, you have a split second to capture someone's attention. So it either has to be a photo of a person they can connect to, um, but most of the time it's, you know, how do you convey that through interactive video or something from an image standpoint that, that garners an emotion or a connection that keeps them on the site, site you know, within a second, because they're going to judge within a second if they, less than a second, actually there's data on this whether they trust a website, whether they, you know, they are going to stick around and stay on that website. So what is it that captures that? And if it's striking imagery of homes that have been sold or, you know, or area landmarks that convey an emotion, things like that, you, you just want to get an emotion out of somebody when they get there and create some sort of familiar familiarity and some sort of connection. Gotcha. Okay. Well, Dolly Lenz, another, you got a lot of famous realtors that you work with, huh? <laughs> yeah, I, I, even, I think that's probably one of the, just from a business standpoint, doing this so long that we take a lot of pride in is we'll have a lot of the agents in the same areas. And, you know, that's probably the greatest compliment we get is that you would have, say, in L.A., whether it's Sally Forster Jones or Aaron Kerman or the Altman Brothers or any of these agents and, and teams, they all trust us to build a unique brand that's different from the other. And you know, that's kind of the beauty, I think, of the internet, too, is it is a great sort of leveling of a playing field because there's so much you can do creatively to that. Um, and that speaks to the agent's personality, their experience, their professionalism. And it's fun to create different variations of that because nobody wants to see the same thing when, when they arrive at a website. If, if everything looks like, then you're just sheep. And that's not what any agent or any brand is. I don't care what industry it is. 
you you need to be memorable. You have to stand out. Um, Brian has a saying, you know, when would technology, uh, you know, or whatever. Uh, <laughs> I think I butchered it, Brian, but uh, <laughs> with your brand. Uh, and, you know, that really is it. You know, how do you stand out? Dolly site, normally, if you look at this one, we have a photo on top here just, you know, for this purpose of the slide. But her site, when it comes in, has a really cool video montage of her background, you know, different um, things where she's been on uh, CBC or different, you know, uh, business analyst shows, things like that. And just her in general and just has all these different clips that are sort of put together. And as you scroll down on the website, it tells about her story. It tells about her, you know, achievements, accomplishments um properties etc but it, it tells a story you know and, and again that's that's sort of yeah. the biggest thing with a website is how do you tell a story uh and to do it effectively and memorably now when we yeah look at and i think oh, go ahead, i think one thing that i would add i think one thing that i'd add is you know as you go through these i think one of the most important tech uh takeaways is you know no one looks alike you know we want to make sure as as john uh, mentioned you know so many agents, uh, you know, mentioning of, of these top level agents that trust us with their brand and their website and you know, their online marketing that we have in the same areas. Um, and that is a huge compliment and, you know, a testament to what we do. Um, and, and by the way, it is a uh, win, win, win at technology and uh, be memorable by your brand and uh, own your market. That, those, yeah. That's the equation. And there's there's a slide you know uh, Marilyn that I should have included here that that you know that's kind of interesting. It's a site. It's charlenechang.com. So it's Charlene S with an S, uh, charlenechang.com. But she's a new agent out here in LA that we did a site for. And what's intriguing about this is with IDX with broker reciprocity, obviously you know 10 plus years ago now, and you can showcase you know listings on a you know any MLS listings et cetera on a site, right? So. She's a new agent, hadn't sold a single property, hadn't you know, represented a buyer uh, at the point we built that, built that site. You would swear she's been in the industry 10, 15 years. Her website looks lights out, um, impressive. It's, uh, it's approachable, it's sexy, it's a stunning site. And you know, I'm a fan of it because I look at it and I look at a new agent coming into the industry and how intimidating that is to be sort of you know, thrown into being especially and she's out here in beverly hills in that area so it's a highly competitive market you've got so much technology thrown at you you know what technology do you use what technology will help you be efficient successful you know what's you know and how do you sift through that and and i feel for agents especially starting out because there's so much even the agents in the industry there's so much tech thrown at them you know how do you figure out what works what is going to make you more efficient more successful um but again you know that site is one i think of because you know, not a single deal done. Her site looks like she has worked with, you know, it, it presents her as one of the most professional, you know, agents in the industry just starting out. And that's that's what the internet can do. That's what technology can do is when it's leveraged correctly, it really can just amplify your brand and put your brand out there. And, and she took her brand seriously from day one. She needed a logo, business cards, everything, you know, basically when we did that, we helped create all that for her because she had no brand identity. So she came to us saying, here's what I have in mind. Here's sort of my mindset with it. You know, how can we create this? And, you know, it's it's intimidating at first when you're starting out and you're then building a brand any any time is can be very intimidating. And it it doesn't need to be. I think that's just finding somebody you're comfortable working with and that can kind of capture that. It's it doesn't need to be as intimidating as it often is, I think. Yeah, that's a, that, that it was really great that you brought up Charlene. Um, beautiful website, by the way. Uh, John's pretty proud of it. He had a lot of input on it. Uh, yeah. and, and this uh, was a new agent who understood, again, they're the value of a site yeah. spent money on a brand right out the gate. And it really, it, it's, yeah, like I said, that part, I, I appreciate good branding. I appreciate good style and attention to detail, like the O Group and stuff. And, you know, when you yeah. see somebody have that kind of care for their brand even from day one, it, it makes a huge difference. Well, we, I, if you get a chance, uh, if you get a chance, uh, and you know, for you know those viewing, uh, if you can ever check out Tony Giordano, uh, who's a, a real estate coach, uh, he's been a long time client of Agent Image. He tells a very similar, powerful story of how he utilized his website um to more or less kind of make his way into real estate and really really kind of have an impact 
Uh, well, right, if Tony, you get a chance. Tony G G I O R D A N O. Is that right, Tony Giordano? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. That's uh, you have the spelling right. Yes. I don't know if that's his actual website, but uh, it might be. I know that he has a number of sites. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Well, th this is this is really helpful, and I, I think that to underline the point about design, you know, sometimes we forget. We think, well, people know us, and it's okay. We can. We don't have to have an amazing design. If you think about other worlds, and you guys mentioned luxury goods and things like that, but even like look at computers, right? What what makes Apple Apple? Yep. It's really about its design, right? It's about its its right. its hardware design, but it's also about its user interface and and other things like that. Not that everyone loves Apple. I know there's people that don't like Apple, but it it's been able to create um, you know just a, a way to differentiate itself significantly and also to hold its price point. That's another really important thing I think to remember, especially yeah. like you say for someone like Charlene who's brand new. If you look like you really have your act together. And obviously you have to have your act together. You can't just have a website. A website can only take you so far, but it can really make a difference when people say, oh, I'm working with the best. You know, it, it yeah. pre presents to you like you're the best. Um, yeah, so and the one thing, one thing that's a really interesting thing that I, yeah, I bring up a lot too is, and this is a, a thing that when people go about purchasing a website, you know, whoever, again, whoever you utilize and whoever you work with, one of the most important things I tell agents is, you know, this is a silly, but, kind of basic question but a lot of people don't ask but make sure you own your website um mm -hmm. because a lot of platforms out there you're kind of renting a site right you you basically go to some place that that right. you know has a couple good looking templates you know you're like okay this will work this will work for my business etc and somebody can invest you know literally tens of thousands of dollars over the course of years uh into something like that the problem with those that you run into one is you always hit a ceiling at some point and and i always tell people this WordPress is a great platform. It's open source. That's what we utilize. There are others out there that are also that way that are sort of free in the sense that you're, you've got tens of thousands of developers across the world working on those and there's always plugins being added. There's always cool technology being added. Um, anytime you're working off these proprietary platforms, I always tell agents, you're, you're only as good as their best developer, their best designer. Um, and you're going to run into scenarios where you get told no. If and you're and you're kind of at the mercy of that company. If their support ever goes, if they go out of business, anything happens like that, you all that money you put into a website, you don't own that website. So the challenge you run into there is, let's say you build up great SEO placement with Google over the course of you know three, five, ten years, whatnot. The day you want to actually, you kind of hit a, a limit of where you can take the site with that company, and you want to do something fresh, something new, something different you're going to run into a problem where you can't take it with you. Literally, you don't own any component of that site. Is and it a templated uh, site? You mean when it's, when yeah. it's something completed? Okay, gotcha. Yeah. And, and there are platforms where I think it makes sense. There are some lead generation sites that might make sense for that, um, that I've seen out there that do a, a decent job. If that's the goal of it. But if it's your branded personal site and the goal is actually your brand and sort of, you know, controlling that, just always make sure you, you kind of own your site. And again, that's, it, it's an easy question to ask right out the gate when you're when you're picking any vendor. If you're working with CRMs and IDX provider stuff, you don't need to own that. Obviously, those are third-party things like right. you know Slack or Salesforce or you know contactually, you know, depending on the industry, right? But those those that type of model makes sense. But when it comes to your business and your brand, you really do need to own that because you've got it. You, you can't be tethered to any other company as far as your business goes with that. Uh, you, you just can't. It, it's there's too much value and stuff you invest over time into your brand into your site um it's just not the industry for that and and i kind of preach this a lot because again whoever you use just make sure you kind of do own that site and you do have that to take with you that portability is priceless uh because moving that stuff later is either near impossible or will cost a fortune just to try and restructure and rebuild on something that you know should have been done right the first time type of thing so question that's coming in um about um if you create your own website, I assume these are linked to the brokerage. Um, I think some people lean toward templated websites because they're they're less expensive or they believe they're less expensive. So someone like uh, Charlene that you mentioned that's brand new, how does she afford a custom built website as a brand new agent? Is it is it a lot no. more expensive or where do where does the price point fall? 
You know, it's intriguing. Um, we have one product we built that we just uh, launched at Inman, uh, Inman Connect now uh, a couple weeks back. We've had it for years and kind of fine tuned. It was an idea that we had because we used to work on a platform like that. We had our own proprietary system that we retired back in 2008 just because we literally got tired of telling people no too many times because, well, it was quick to build sites on, it was efficient. You do hit your own limitations with it. So um, we built a product called Agent Image X, and it's not marketed heavily right now because we're just putting it out there because we, we really wanted to create something that truly gave people ownership of a site at a very low price point. So these mm -hmm. sites were built at under $1,000, which is as cheap as any template wow. that's out there. Um, the client has complete ownership of the site. If they didn't like working with us a year from now, they could move it, do whatever they want with it. Um, it's sort of our baby because we just saw a need that there had to be a, a low entry price point for ownership of your brand that you can build on. It's built on WordPress at that level. So you, which is obviously the most widely used platform in the world as well as extremely friendly with Google and search engines. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that, it's amazing. That is, one of, that is a conception that was out there that I think was founded for a long time. Yep. Um, I think we're not the only game in town. There's other companies that work off of that that you can probably get done inexpensively. Um, it's not as cost prohibitive as people think, and it's not as sort of daunting of, you know, am I going to have to build everything from the ground up? It's, no, it's it's the opposite. There's so many plugins built for it. It's almost limitless what you can do with a platform like that. And you can easily, I, like those sites we do, starting from about 500 to 1,000, depending on the level what we do on that. Um, there's others out there that do the same thing but it's not cost prohibitive. It's, in fact, it's cheaper a lot of times than some of the templates you'll find out there and, uh, and sort of what's in the market. But so a great and I'd, I'd, say, I'd say also is that, you know, you can, still, you can still incorporate your brand. You can still build your brand. You, you don't have to sacrifice your brand because it's a template. Very well um, said. At least, right, especially with the, the particular website that John's referring to, the Agent mm -hmm. Image Acts, um, but that goes for any template you know that that you use. You should be able to uh, incorporate your brand. Don't sacrifice your brand as a as a matter of oh well, I'm just going to have yeah. a template site. Yeah, I agree. Sense. I think even with that, it's it's um, you know template is it's kind of a rough word to use because even with those sites we do, there is a template structure to them from a standpoint of of you know being able to scale something like that. But I think really the component is how much can you personalize that? How much can you grow off of that foundation? Because your website is ever evolving, just like your brand or your business is. So you just want to make sure you're on a foundation where you can actually customize that over time and really build that up. Um, yeah, I think that's really the idea behind it is how do you build something that's scalable for your business that you have ownership and you know can control from day one that you can really build upon? And And so that to me is... You know, how much yeah. can you customize how much can you make it your own through imagery, through obviously things like logo and things like that. But, you know, video, et cetera. How do you make that your own and really put a personality to it? Well, and I guess the, here's here's the, the litmus, litmus test I would put to everyone in the audience. If you look at your website and you cringe in any way or you oh. don't actually feel proud about it in, in any way, if there's something about it that just just doesn't make you feel good about it then you have to change it. It's that simple. Because yeah. at the end of the day, if you don't feel good about it, how do you expect other people to feel good about it, right? And Very it's one well of those said. things that it's a lot of work and who's gonna write the content and how, I don't know how to do video. And you, you, you get yourself in that, you talk yourself out of it. Mm. Oh, I'm too busy or I'm not busy enough or I have too much business or I'm too broke, or, right? We, we all have excuses. But the truth is if you don't look at it and go, I'm really proud of that. And I, I feel like it does put my best foot forward. It's time to make a change. And then yeah, even 100%. 100%. Yeah. And just yeah. put, put time and care into it like you would anything else you do. Uh, you know, no matter what, it's worth doing. And don't let it overwhelm you at first. You can always build it as you go. You don't have to make it exactly. so content heavy. So, you know, it, just just get something out there and, and get some place to start from because you've, you've got forever to build that brand and, and just like you would your business in any other aspect. So, yeah, even if the, the home page is beautiful. And you've got a, good, a property search and IDX plugin that you like. If you just have those two things, you're in a, you're in really good shape. But guys, we got really chatty today, and we have a whole other section on our on our presentation. So, <laughs> Might have to make it a two part. Uh, can we go through that that quickly, or do you? Are we yeah. Quick, yeah, let's just go through it quickly because I know this is a new product and it's pretty cool. 
So let's just kind of, we'll just go through the slides quickly, yeah. okay? All right, we, yeah, we, got, we got excited there for a minute. So tell us about yeah. this. What, what are we looking at here? So this, um, and I'll probably let Brian have the floor on most of this. This is sort of his baby. We, we okay. talked about developing this for a few years, and the idea was, even before this hit, the timing it was just kind of strange in how it happened. We'd always wanted to build sort of a, a digital online listing presentation that was, because that's where we saw everything headed before COVID, before any of this, is more and more people are doing business virtually, technology, people would always go and listen to presentations, the agents we talked to, and you know, there's only so many listing presentation lead behinds that are gonna look unique, right? If you've got multiple agents from the same brokerage, you've got you know a lot of the same collateral being left behind on, on someone's coffee table, how right. do you create something that's more interactive and different when you show up to a listing presentation? Uh, so that was where this was born out of. Again, we thought about kind of for years how we would build it, and it sort of came to fruition probably about six months ago when we were doing a newsletter design for uh, Frederick Eklund and Eklund Gomes and their team. Uh, we get to chatting about different things, and this was one of the options. I was like, you know, this is something we thought about building. It'd be cool to sort of develop it. What do you guys think? And they love the idea. So they helped kind of give us input along the way of what they saw the needs would be, what they kind of, and this thing took on a life of its own. What originally set out as sort of a, a listing presentation tool ended up being almost more of a virtual open house tool component that came along with it, um, which I'll, I'll let Brian get into, but it's, it's, it will change a lot of things already where we're headed with, with this pandemic and everything else, even after this, a lot more will go digital. So how do you create a memorable listing presentation that really captures your brand, stands out from whatever else, you know, whoever else has been there or digitally now been there to present to a seller about, you know, listing their home. What can we do to make something that sort of is, is different and really is memorable? Um, so yeah, go for it, man. Yeah, and I mean, uh, feel free to, to just kind of go through these slides and I'll just uh, give you a kind of a brief overview. Um, okay. The thought behind it is that, you know, there are a lot of different technologies that are out there that are helpful in, you know, uh, whether it's utilizing video, you know, floor plans, uh, Matterport or virtual tours uh, are a thing that a lot of folks are using. Um, interactive maps with information about, you know, schools in the area or, you know, shopping in the area, whatever it may be. Um, there are all these amazing um, tools out there that help agents that, uh, gosh, that, to be honest with you, are kind of scare agents at times as far as technology goes, right? That uh they're like well you know if i have if the if the client has all this information what do they need me for and part of our thought process behind this was instead of you know fearing the technology uh, as agents kind of have a tendency to do um it is more empower the agent with the technology bring it all together in one place so that you know they have the most effective tools and they have the most efficient way to use each tool. It almost increases the power of having a virtual tour when it's combined with floor plans, when it's combined with video, when it's combined with you know uh, photos or uh, whatever it may be in a very user friendly and most importantly branded uh, platform, right? Um, imagine coming into a listing presentation, sending this to somebody with a personalized uh, video, you know, Mr. And, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, you know, uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, I've put together some information. I hope you enjoy uh, of, you know, kind of our, uh, what I can do for you and your listing that really actually brings the listing to life, gives the That's listing good. life and actually shows it Potentially, like uh, as Julia kind of puts it, uh, you know, you have these Matterport things that uh, can can be kind of a creepy dollhouse effect to the uh, to the to the actual property itself. But when you combine it with a, like a cool walkthrough video or whatever it may be, it's mm -hmm. like, oh, well, that kind of makes more sense, especially in a place like New York where things are like really small to begin with, right? Now right. you can really kind of show, wow, okay, there is some, some I, I kind of get the feel of this. Uh, the way I look at, looked at what we put together, and uh, just to be clear, this is a, 
this is a two product, so basically a two part tool. And the first part being a listing presentation where you know we're empowering the agent to put their you know marketing and everything in a digital you know handshake, if you will, and present this to you know potential sellers to land the listing. Uh, the second part tool would be the online open house. Which okay, can you, can uh, you is to the slides a little bit because we're we're about to run out of time. So can you just yeah, kind of no problem? Yeah, let's just yeah, I'll, I'll just, go yeah, ahead and fire through. Uh, and as you go, go through ahead. these, yeah, as you go through these two, the idea is uh, to what Brian said. You know, a lot of times what we see nowadays is technology sort of you know the agent, the consumer kind of bypasses the agent, goes straight to Zillow, goes straight to these different resources. Um, we wanted to bring that back to the agent and really show, no, the agent is more integral, more needed than ever, and here's why and here's how, and put more power into these presentations where you're giving the client, whether it's buyer or seller, uh, especially buyer side of it, um, more information than they can get on Zillow about a property. Uh, an agent could conceivably walk the property one time, you know, shoot video of different rooms, put it into the system, personal message to their client, they can even create, you know, eight personal messages to eight different clients, walk that property once, but give them a much broader view of the property than they'll ever get through just, you know, whatever the MLS is kind of kicking out to Zillow, to Redfin, to these different sites, these portal sites, but putting more information, you know, about a property than they're ever going to get that way and save the consumer the time of going to see 15 homes. Maybe they're instead by seeing this really complete picture of a property can, you know, go to two or three homes uh, that, that really meet their criteria, what they're looking for. There's so many ways to leverage technology this way. And I kind of use that word again, because you can showcase so much of a property if you take these different components, the virtual tour, the photos, the personal walkthroughs an agent can do and upload those videos even from their phone. And you can kind of put all this together to make somebody really be able to kind of touch and feel a property um, you know, more than they ever could before. It's just, there wasn't really a product out there that put, you know, all of this in one place kind of as a home. I, I say it's kind of a home for their home, but it really is that. And that was the idea. You know, you show the agent's brand, you show the marketing, you show those aspects of it. But at the same time, you now add value to the property, add value to the agent by actually wrapping it within a brand and making the property look like a million bucks versus what you typically would find on a, again, a Zillow. It's, it's a knock, there's good content information. It's just not presented as beautifully as it could be, as well branded as it could be. And that and was sort of the can idea. I, can I present this over a Zoom or is, is it like, do I, do I send this to them or do I have to be in person or I can do this? So I can, it looks like I no, can do it. You can see here they were kind of structured for an iPad, right? So the idea behind this was to make it browser-based and app-based, kind of like a Facebook would be or Slack or anything like that. But right. the idea is you can, by inputting all this data, you can kick out a web link that you can send to them. So it's a digital link. You Got can very create a printable PDF version of it if they do want to print a flyer version off of it just to sort of have at their fingertips. Um, you can send it, uh, yeah, it's basically, that's the idea of, of it is it can be presented digitally or in person on an iPad where you can flip through it and actually go through the photos, go through everything. Um, really interactive was the idea, whether they're viewing on their iPad by themselves or whether you're there in person to do it. The idea is that you give them a listing presentation that's really, really different from anything they're going to see um, being presented today by any of the, even the big brokers is different. You know, it's, it's putting that brand back to the agent where it's not so much broker centric. And, you know, you, you know, that. I mean, if you, if you look at uh, all the lead behinds that these sellers typically have, it's very uh, broker inspired branding with the agent's expertise in there, but they all tend to look the same in, in a sense where it's not about the agent's brand. It's not as, as centric as it could be for that. And it's not unique and doesn't stand out. So our goal with this was to put that control back in the, sort of the agent, the, the our client's hands typically, because that's who we're working with mostly, and have uh -huh. their brand be front and center while being strongly supported by their brokerage, because that's important, and sort of the breadth of the marketing and the scope of what they provide, uh, you want to tie all that in and leverage it. But at the same time, you really want it to be memorable about the agent, because that's the person who is going to win or, or lose that listing. So you really want to make it stand out. Yeah. Well, th uh, this is awesome. So let us know more about this when it comes out. We'll We'll definitely want to promote it to our uh, readers because it's really cool. Yeah, we're um, shooting around Liberty this year, so that'll be that's when we hope to have it to market. Right now, it's in beta, but it's uh, it's a fun product. It's something like I said it's sort of passion to our of 
a passion of ours because it really our idea was can we put the the control make the agent that much you know more important in the transaction to really mm -hmm. utilize tech and not you know and not have it sort of bypass them and go that route so so if, if anybody would like more information about Agent Image or Agent Image X or this program that we just saw that's going to be coming, it's agentimage.com or 1-800-979-5799, or you can just write to Brian at bshore at agentimage.com, and these guys will tell you more. You can see that they're very passionate about trying to help you really be front and center and to put your best foot forward. So if you feel like you're ready to do that, these guys could be a great one to help you with that. Maybe you'll have the next million dollar TV show if you work with them, right? <laughs> could happen. Yeah. Never <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Ron. Thank you for everything. Thanks, Marilyn. Yeah, thank uh, you, Marilyn. Yeah, I wanted to remind you, uh, we've got Josh Tillerson coming in from uh, Vice President of Sales from Forewarn. Uh, that's a very different topic than what we talked about today. So he's going to talk to us about making sure that when we're working with prospects, it's it's somebody that's not going to do anything bad to us, basically. And then I, I'm on Wednesday this week, I'm actually going to jump in because I've learned so much, as I'm sure many of you have, from all these different people. I'm going to try to put it in a little bit more of a manageable box to put in our heads, so we have a we have a place to go with all of this stuff. So you'll you'll just have to deal with me on Wednesday, guys. Sorry. Um, and on, uh, I wanted to remind everybody if there's a, if you would like us to, we'll sign you up automatically to get coffee chats, so you don't have to worry about registering every day. You can either just do it in the question box, or put it in to me at Marilyn at retechnology.com, and we'll get you signed up. And then finally, you you will be getting a copy of this, a recording of this, um, as someone that registered. So thank you for everyone that did that. But also, if you'd like to register on our YouTube channel, subscribe there, and then hit the little um, bell next to it, you will then, at RE Technology Inc., you'll get notified of all of our coffee chats and all of our rep webinars. And we do, you know, many of them, as many of you probably know. So you'll you'll never miss one. You can always forward it to someone if you like. We also have them listed on our webinar, the webinar section of retechnology.com if you ever want to go there. And then finally, we want to make sure that you all get to take full advantage of all this great insight we get from folks like Brian and John. Um, so if you are not, if you do not have access to RE Technology through your MLS, many of you do, so make sure you check first. Um, you can go to retechnology.com up in the right-hand side. You'll see a section called Create Account, and uh, we'll give you a free three-month subscription. Just check on the monthly option, and you'll use one of those codes that are listed there, and we'll be good to go. So thanks again, guys. This was really good. Um, I love that you're so passionate about design. Um, the world is a prettier place when we have great designers in it, and Frankly, it feels like just a calmer, more restful place when you have great design surrounding you. So we appreciate all that you do for the industry. Uh, uh, thank thanks. you very much. Absolutely. And thank everybody you. have a good, good week, and um, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Awesome. Bye, guys. Bye.